Welcome everyone that's just joining us. We'll just give it another minute or so just to let some more join. Your cameras and mics will stay off uh, for the remainder of this webinar, but if you've got any uh, comments to make, you can pop it in the chat box um, and questions in the Q&A box. You can find that just at the bottom of your screen on the Zoom, the Zoom page. So I think that's probably everyone. I think Sidra will get going, yeah. shall we? Yeah. yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Um, we're just going to start by getting some housekeeping out the way. So if we just pop to the next slide, please. So we're just going to read this disclaimer. Uh, this presentation is a corporate presentation from ATOS Medical Group. Nothing in this presentation provides any diagnosis, clinical advice, indication, guide, warranty or guarantee. Nothing in this presentation can substitute individual advice or guidance from a qualified healthcare professional. You must see your clinician or a qualified caregiver for advice on your condition and on products that may be appropriate for you. So as I said, um, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, we're going to have a chat today about winter health and caring for your stoma uh, now that the colder months are coming. My name is Jess. I am one of the field nurses um, that covers London and the Southeast. And I'm joined by Sidra today, uh, which is one of our customer care nurses. So it's lovely to see her and have her with us. If we can pop to the next slide, please. So I just want to start off with a quick poll. Shortly, there'll be a little box that pops up um, and we just want to know how long you've had your laryngectomy for. Uh, so if we put that poll up, you can see there will be less than one year, one to four years or five plus years. So just select the one that is most appropriate for you. <clears throat> Just wait for those results to come in and we should have the answers pop up shortly. Aha, perfect. So 20% of you less than one year, one to four years, about half of you, and then the rest of you five plus years. So we've got some quite um, experienced laryngectomies with us by the looks of things today. So that's great. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to have a chat about the impact of the cold weather upon your lungs. Um, as I say, it's getting cold and dark now um, and that cold air is definitely coming in, having to put my heating on a little bit. I know that for sure. Um, and during these cold winter days, you can experience maybe more frequent coughing, um, an increase in production of your mucus, um, and you may struggle with sensitive or irritated airways. And why is this? Um, this is because the cold air um, is drier as well and it holds less moisture than it does in the summer months. Um, and I don't know if you have previously joined any webinars, but we have discussed about the airways and, and how that there's lots of tiny little hairs that are in our, our airways and they're responsible for kind of collecting mucus and, and allowing you to cough it back up. Um, so when you breathe in this cold air, those tiny little hairs don't work so well. And this is why it's so important for you to be wearing a HME 24-7 um, to make sure that you're getting the best humidification and warmth into your lungs that you can. If we can go to the next slide, please. And we've just got a short video now um, and it's about using a HME. So I'll put myself on mute and we can play that. What's really important after a laryngectomy is that you wear your HME both in day and at night. Your breathing has changed after the surgery because you no longer breathe in through your nose. Your nose conditions air and that means it heats air, it filters air and it humidifies air that you breathe in. 
that's why it's so important for you to wear an HME. And an HME is a heat moisture exchanger. A heat moisture exchanger also heats the air, it adds humidity and it filters out dust and some bacteria. So that's really helpful to your lungs because without wearing the HME, the lungs get really irritated and then what happens is you start coughing a lot and that is really distressing for you. Fab, so I'm going to pass over to Sidra now and uh, she's going to carry on with the presentation. Thanks, Sidra. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. So we're going to start with um, a poll, another poll. Um, and I want to ask you guys, have you tried the Provox Life Protect HME? Um, so if you can just click on one of the one of the options, either you have tried it, you'd like to try it or you haven't tried it yet. So again, we'll just wait for some of those answers to come in. There we go. So uh, that's brilliant. Thank you, guys. So about 82% of you have tried it, um, which is fantastic. So a lot of you are already aware exactly what is the Protect HME. Um, I am going to just go into a little bit about exactly what it is, um, just for those of you that would like to try it um, or that you haven't tried it yet, or perhaps you've not heard of it yet. It is essentially, like all of the others, a heat and moisture exchanger. But as I'm sure you've noticed, um, if you've seen a picture of them, which is one on the screen right now as well, it's slightly larger in size compared to the other uh, home and go HMEs. Um, this larger size is, is to allow the additional property that the Protect HME has of having a really highly effective electrostatic filter. Um, the, this particular filter protects you and your lungs from over 98% of airborne particles, including bacteria, viruses, dust, pollen, etc. Now, when the Protect HME is used in certain situations, the filter itself can actually visibly change colour and become slightly darker. This is a good sign that it's working and protecting your airways from taking in those airborne particles. Um, also, a point to note um, is that this particular Protect HME in comparison to the old version, uh, which you may or may not have heard of as the Micron HME. The new Protect HME has an improved breathability. Um, and this was actually determined by over 60% of our Provox Life Experience program users who reported that it was easier to breathe through when wearing it compared to the old Micron HME. So let's have a look at some of the situations when it would be quite beneficial to use um, the Protect HME. The electrostatic filter is ideal to give you protection in busy places, public transport, etc. Um, in this season in particular, and with the recent lockdown having eased completely in a lot of places, you might find that you're able to socialise a bit more with your family and friends and take part in festive gatherings, etc. Um, such occasions like this, it would be ideal to wear your Protect HME to give you that peace of mind that you are essentially protected as best as you are able to be. Um, you might even find out that find that you're starting to go out and get some of your Christmas shopping done or even if you've enjoyed some of the bonfire night fireworks uh, recently again on, on such occasions like this we'd recommend that you safeguard yourself using the Protect HME. So Jess talked briefly earlier about the impact of the cold weather upon your lungs. Very simply, what we want to do is retain as much moisture and warmth in the air around our stoma to ease some of the effect of that cold weather. And we can do this by layering up. Just how, you know, when we go outside in the cold, we'd layer up our clothes with a jumper um, and then a coat to stay warm and retain that heat. We'd recommend that you layer over your stoma and your HME with a bib protector and or a scarf. Now, for some of you, you might find this a little bit difficult to begin with, um, and you might find that it's restricting your breathing. Um, this is why we'd advise you to try on a bib protector initially, take some nice deep breaths and just get used to the feeling of breathing through this as well as your HME. 
Then when you feel ready and you're about to go outside, layer up with a scarf and again, take some gentle breaths and make sure you're comfortable with your breathing before you step outdoors. Um, there will be a notable difference in your breathing. And of course, we don't want you to be struggling, but if you can maintain this layering technique and, and manage it, and it's, it is ideal for retaining that heat and moisture in the air that you're breathing around your stoma. Next slide, lovely. Um, so caring for your stoma in the colder weather, I want to sh briefly share some of the results of a global study that was actually commissioned by ATOS Medical. The study included um, just under 2,000 participants across nine different countries uh, with a huge range of demographics, time since their laryngectomy surgery and their product use. Um, significantly the results, you know, around 50% of all participants had experienced some redness or irritation after wearing adhesives. Um, and around 30% had difficulty in getting their adhesives to stay on um, due to sensitive, irritated or wet skin. So, Again, another poll that we'd just like to just find out is a question I'd like to ask you is how often do you experience irritation around your stoma? Um, again, please click one of the, the, the options that most sort of applies to you. Do you experience it regularly, um, occasionally, a bit of irritation or, or rarely or, or never? So just wait for those results to, again to come in. Lovely. So um, what I'm seeing is a good 47% of, of you all occasionally do, do uh, experience a bit of irritation around your stoma. 16% um, of you do regularly as well, um, which is which is quite significant. You know, if you think about it, a huge percentage of, of our patients do experience this. Thank you. Um, so how does winter and the cold weather actually affect the skin around your stoma and what causes this irritation? Well, as again, Jess, Jess had mentioned this briefly before, but the cold air actually dries out your skin in general. Um, and I'm sure many of you have felt um, can lead to other parts of your body, such as your nose, your lips, your face um, becoming redder and a little bit more irritated. You might have found that you've got to moisturize a little bit more in general on your face um, or on your hands just to make your skin feel that bit more comfortable. Um, I know in, in the cold weather, I often have to use a bit more lip balm when outdoors um, in, the, in, in the cold. So for the skin around your stoma, which can already be more fragile, thin, or sensitive, the harsh weather can leave it a bit more irritated, making it more difficult for you to, to apply your adhesives and wear them, uh, you know, uh, for a longer period of time and therefore more difficult to wear your HMEs. Um, and as we've spoke before, it's, it's really important to wear your HME 24-7. Your airways and your lungs are designed to work at best at around 37 degrees centigrade. If the temperature does drop below this, your airways can start to get irritated, causing an increase in coughing and mucus production. Um, increased mucus can then lead to excess moisture around your stoma, which is also a cause of skin irritation. So looking after your skin, the key points to looking after your skin are, first of all, to use a skin friendly change routine. Even if you feel that you've got quite healthy skin, pulling off your adhesives without the proper removal can result in skin irritation, um, especially if this is done on a daily basis over a long period of time. The second point is to use adhesives that are made of skin friendly material, such as hydrogel and hydrocolloid. The hydrogel adhesives give your skin a chance to recover and breathe while still being able to use your HME. And the hydrocolloid adhesives can be used with sensitive skin. Thirdly, to help look after your skin, please use resources that are available to you. So speak with your clinicians at the hospital or do speak with our customer care team to talk through your options and find the best adhesives that work specifically for you. Now, I'd like to show you a short video of uh, Louise, one of our patients from Brazil, who's um, just going to talk you through what his routine is like, just demonstrating again the correct routine that we advise you to follow for an adhesive change routine. Hello, I am Louise. Changing the adhesive can be quite tricky, but now I've figured it out. This is what I do in the morning.
That's great. Thank you for watching that. So um, from that video, a significant point that I'd like you to remember is that it's not just about doing this routine every day. It's actually about taking your time to do this routine properly, which is what helps your skin. So again, briefly, as you saw, the skin was initially cleansed using a, a cleaning towel wipe. Um, this was then given the time to dry. A skin barrier wipe was then used, and it's important to remember to keep the wipe folded and used just like that when it's removed from the packet. Again, and this is the important part, this was given the time to dry before applying an adhesive. Um, and lastly, remember to use an adhesive remover wipe to help remove that sticky adhesive. Even if you feel that you are perfectly happy and pulling it straight off, which a lot of, a lot of my own patients have said, you know, no, I'm completely happy just taking it off. Um, and, and you feel that even if it is, you're, you're okay to do that and it's not hurting the skin, but please don't. In the long run, it can damage your skin. And, you know, when the right products are actually available to you, please give your skin the care that it deserves. Now, I'd like to hand you back over to Jess. Thanks, Sidra. Um, I think that was really, really important what you were talking about, about skin um, irritation and, and how best to look after the surrounding skin of your stoma. So thanks for that. We're going to have a talk about um, just looking after yourself in general this winter. Um, we'll go, you know, it, it's cold, it's dark, the nights are getting longer. You know, I know it's, it's, it's starting to get dark now, it feels anyway. But, um, and, you know, all of these things can have a, a really big impact um, on your physical and your mental well-being as well. Um, so I just want to highlight how important it is to take care of yourself um, from an all around basis. Um, so in addition um, to taking extra precautions such as wearing the Protect HME in the right situation, um, consider getting your flu and COVID booster jabs if you're you know, eligible and you're offered one. Um, if you haven't been offered one, I know that you could probably get in touch with your GP um, or your local pharmacy to, to find the best way about going to book that. Keeping your home heated to at least 18 degrees. Uh, this is a really good tip. Um, I will also say it can it can be a little bit of a catch-22 sometimes because of the cold air outside coming inside. It can be quite drying, but then we can link this back to making sure that you're wearing HMEs 24-7, um, ideally, is the gold standard. Um, but having that warmth in, at home and when you're sitting at home with the HME in situ, it would really benefit your lungs from that as well. Staying stocked up on, on food and medicine, uh, making sure that you, you are ordering your meds in advance if you need anything from the pharmacy. Um, likewise, anything that you need for stoma care, make sure that you've got, you know, particularly with the Christmas uh, period coming fast upon us, uh, make sure that you've ordered enough to kind of have a little backup reserve um, over the Christmas period, especially. Next slide, please. And we've got some five uh, winter health top tips here. So as Sidra was saying earlier, uh, wearing several layers of cloth, uh, clothing as they are warmer uh, than just one big bulky, you know, jacket or, or jumper. Um, and, and having that, those layers cover your stoma as well, um, that would help to improve the warmth and humidification in your lungs while you are out and about. Um, enjoying the festivities um, wearing a scarf as well is our next one um, retaining the, hum the the heat as I just said um, and keeping active I think it's it's really underestimated um, how you know your physical mental um, well-being all comes into one and if you are making sure that you're getting out and, and keeping your body moving regularly um it will it will only benefit you basically uh making sure you're nice and hydrated as well hydration can really help with um if you're having a change in your mucus if it's getting a bit thicker a bit stickier over the winter really make sure that you're drinking enough as well staying connected it can be quite lonely can't it sometimes in the winter everyone kind of goes into a bit of hibernation um if you are tech savvy then you know make sure that you check in with friends and family um with video calls um you know even if it's just a quick 10 minutes i think it's really important to stay connected with your loved ones um and if you're not so tech savvy you know a good old-fashioned phone call always um always hit the spot doesn't it so Having, having a little chat with them and, and hearing those familiar voices while you're at home uh, can really 
really help kind of keep that that winter loneliness away and keeping your mind active as well as I said it kind of all comes hand in hand it's kind of the holistic approach that we we take to to looking after ourselves isn't it we, we think about the mind and the body all kind of as one um if you like to fill out the daily crossword in the paper that's something that keeps your mind active and, and it keeps things you know keeps you switched on doesn't it and keeps you kind of um on the ball um puzzles as well is another good one um I know that puzzles with with family members is is always a good uh, a good activity to do if you have somebody visit rather than kind of just sitting in front of the tv at a screen it's it's a good way to to keep you know interactive with everyone isn't it next slide please so this is kind of uh rounding up the presentation part of the um of today's webinar um, we're just going to talk about some support that's available from ATOS Care. So of course, we've got a customer care team. So that involves, um, you know, customer care agents that are able to take your orders. And then we've also got lovely Sidra, who's here today. And we've got a few other nurses um, that are in the customer care team as well. Um, and they are great for some over the phone telephone advice. Um, they're a, often able to pick up a few um things that may be going wrong for you and and they're really good at, at finding ways to to support you over the phone um, and of course they they'll always be able to pass on a referral to um us at the field the field teams so that's myself and and a few other nurses dotted around the country um that's have the ability to come out and see you in your home if a phone call isn't quite enough for you um, all of the contact details and email addresses are on your screen now so it might be a nice idea to drop them down um, if you need to get in touch with anyone and then of course we've got the online events um, so the next one we have is at the end of this month um, and it's a workshop so it's a little bit different than the webinar you get to have your your cameras on and your mics on if you wish to um, and I think there's a link that's just been dropped in the chat if you want to register for that. And it will just give you a chance to really connect with other, other laryngectomy patients um, and have a, have a chat and, and, a, and a, an open discussion. You know, you can kind of come and go as you please. Um, if you can't attend the whole, the whole event, you can just kind of pop in and pop out and, and get some tips and tricks from, from fellow laryngectomies. Um, and of course, one of our nursing team will be there um, and speech and language therapist as well. So it would be a really nice, nice event to attend. And there's a few charities as well. You know, we've spoken lots about physical and mental well-being um, during the cold weather and, and the long dark, uh, the long dark days and nights that we have. Um, and these are just a few of of the amazing charities and they do some amazing work um age uk every mind matters please jot down some of these if you think you're struggling mentally um or physically and there's always someone at the end of the phone to have a chat with um we've got the swallows uh charity which is um for laryngectomy patients um and the samaritans mcmillan cancer support there's really a lot of of amazing charities out there that you can reach out to if you are struggling with with any of the things that we've spoken about uh you know not directly related to your stoma necessarily it could just be about your general well-being um so please please don't don't be afraid or, or just feel confident enough to reach out to someone and have a chat with them next that's it so that brings us to the end of the um slideshow as I said, now is kind of the time to submit any questions you may have um, at the bottom of the, the Zoom um, window. There's there's a chat box and a QA and a box. You can submit um, questions or I know that at the beginning we did the poll and some of you have been a laryngectomy for, for quite some time. And if you've got any helpful tips and tricks um, that gets you through the winter, please feel free to share. Um, in the meantime, while I just give you some time to submit your questions, uh, we have had some that were helpfully um, popped in prior to the webinar. Um, and Sidra, I think you've got a hold of those, yeah. can you? So I've got them here. Um, so I'm just going to run through a, a few questions and uh, if you're happy just to sort of um, 
talk through some of the answers to this. So um, the first question that I've got is, why does my mucus always get thick and sticky this time of year? Yeah, so this is a really good question. Um, you know, as we discussed earlier, the air is drier and it's colder. Um, it doesn't hold kind of the moisture in the air that, that it does during the summer, the summer months when it's warmer. Um, and this is kind of what contributes to, to an increase in mucus production. Um, we have to stress an importance on humidification, warmth, hydration. Um, I don't think I can really, you know, say it enough how important it is to, to find the right HME for you um, and find what works best for you. Um, the heating at home, as I said earlier, a little bit of a catch-22 sometimes. You really want to keep the house warm enough, um, you know, when you're at home, but it, it does also dry out the air as well and it and it contributes to that lack of moisture um so wearing a hme again i can't stress it enough um other tips and tricks for that sort of thing uh can be i know for me personally i actually have a humidifier in my bedroom um because it gets very dry in my in my place um during winter so you know it's not even just for uh laryngectomy um patients it, it it's kind of for everyone you know you yeah. are more uh what's the word conventional breathers you know the ones that haven't had a, a laryngectomy as well it's really beneficial for for an air humidifier um and you can you can pop you know some essential oils in the make and that could be really beneficial for you as well. I agree with that, Jess, because I've got a, I've got a humidifier as well. And You've got one too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, particularly when because when, the yeah, air's getting colder outside, so you want to pop your heating on and you find that the air gets drier inside. You wake up sometimes with a bit of a dry nose, don't you? Yeah. Um, but having that humidifier has really helped me in particular as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and as I said, it, it's kind of, it's it's relevant to all of us, isn't it? It's it's one of those things that that you don't really think about until you know about it, sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, and also I don't know how many of you either nebulize or steam still. Some of you, um, I know that some of my patients I see out in the community, they are they are not nebulizing anymore or they're not steaming anymore. But if you're finding your secretions are getting a bit thicker and sticky, um, then you know a nebulizer here and there might might help. Uh, solve the issue a little bit yeah a nebulizer will help sort of um, thin out those secretions and just help you to cough them up um as you say particularly as if they're quite thick and sticky um, and yeah. so it's they're definitely worth a go yeah absolutely um so we've actually had one question pop in the, in the box um, by one of our attendees um uh, it says you emphasize 24 7 hme use but probably every other night for, for this for this gentleman in particular the night hme falls out while they're asleep um is there any way to stop that from happening yeah absolutely i think that's mike that sent that in isn't it thanks for your question mike um i mean first of all there's a couple of things i would say um i am assuming it's the provox life night hme that you're using um I know that there was a, um, a previous version and, and make sure you're wearing the right base plate. So if it is a Provox Life HME, you would need a Provox Life base plate or a Larry tube, depending on what you're currently using, um, to make sure that, that it fits in. Um, it's got an audible click. So when you pop it in, you should be able to hear it click, click in place. Um, so just be careful of the compatibility. I know, I know that's been, that's quite often um, the case. If you are using um, the right, you know, the compatible products, the right base plate with the right HME, um, and you're still having this problem, I mean, I would definitely recommend ringing uh, customer care mm -hmm. and speaking to one of the nurses over the phone. Um, it's it's a bit tricky to um, to make a full assessment just over this, but just some things for you to think about. Um, and as I said, if you're still struggling, please give the office a call um, and they will definitely be able to put you through to one of our nurses to give you a hand. Um, yeah. And depending on where you're based, I'm not sure where you are, where you're based, but you might be eligible for a home visit as well, um, depending on where you are. We don't have a nurse that covers the entirety of the country at the moment, but but always worth, worth an ask. So um, I hope we can help fix that problem for you. 
Have you got anything yeah. to add, Sidra? Uh, no, no, I was just going to reiterate the point that you made about Probox and Probox Life, particularly as the new products have come out. So sometimes there's a little bit of a, a sort of a confusion as to compatibility. Yeah. Um, but they, the Probox Life are only compatible with Probox Life yeah. and the old Probox is only compatible with the old Probox. But I think, Mike, you popped a, a, a comment, say, um, Larry Tube, and yes, Provox. So it may well be that you're using the older range. Again, please do speak with, with your, your hospital clinician directly or one of our customer care team or one of our nurses. Um, you know, we, we will try and find a solution that works for you in particular. Um, so, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, and please, as I say, do, do call in or do message in. All right. Thank you. Um, We've had uh, one of our one of our uh, attendees has said that they will use a humidifier in the bedroom. So I think um, to help with the dry air. So I think we, we've we've done some good there, Jess. Good. Yeah, I'm glad. It's it, it really I find it beneficial. You know, I think um, I've had some some airway issues growing up with asthma and all those different things, and it's been really beneficial for myself. So um, hopefully Lovely. you find some benefit with that as well. So um, another question that's uh, popped up from before. Um, why does the air still feel cold when 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 you're breathing, even through a HME? Uh, do, does that mean that my HME is still working properly? Um, why is this? Yeah, so that's a, another really good question. Um, you know, a HME can retain heat to a certain extent, um, but when the temperature drops significantly, um, you know, we're getting into these kind of frosty mornings, um, the cold air will still reach the airways, unfortunately. Um, but this is where we can kind of loop back around to uh, making sure you've got layers on. Um, and as Sidra said earlier, you know, there will be a change in your breathing. There'll be a change in the, the what we call resistance of breathing. Um, it, it will feel a little bit more difficult to breathe initially, but with some practice, you know, starting with a bib over your base plate and HME or your Larry tube and HME me whichever you're wearing um start start with a bib um take a few breaths sit there on the sofa for you know as long as you need to to kind of adjust um and then make sure that you're you're layering up with a with a scarf when you pop out as well um it takes a bit of practice i i know i can under, i can appreciate how you know that change in breathing must feel a little bit uncomfortable at first but um you know making sure that that you've got those layers to retain as much heat as possible is so so important so you will still feel, feel the cold air um but hopefully these tips and tricks can make it a little bit more comfortable for you lovely perfect thank you jess um another question is that um during the day that I'm, you know i'm feeling fine breathing normally during a cold dry day but when it's actually mild and wet outdoors um, i'm finding it harder to breathe with my hme why is this yeah, so this is, um, you know, the idea of a HME is to retain the moisture that you breathe out. So when you pop the HME on, you start breathing through it and every breath out, it will trap some air, um, some yeah, air moisture in, into the, the HME. And that's how it kind of warms, warms the air that you breathe back in. Um, so when it's kind of wet outside, if you think that you're getting this moisture from your breath, um, and then you are also getting the, the, the wetness and the moisture from the air outside. Um, it's going to kind of saturate the, the HME a bit quicker um, with, the, with the humidity levels. So you might want to consider changing your HME um, a bit more often. So, you know, there's some, some patients I know that will, will change their HME just once a day, and some of them will, will be kind of three or four times a day, dependent on their secretion load, um and and how wet it feels as well um so i think you should all be aware that that a hme has a lifespan of 24 hours so from the moment you start breathing through it it only has a lifespan of 24 hours um, and then it must be changed but that doesn't mean to say that you can't change it after four five hours six hours um sort of halfway through the day you put a fresh one on in the morning maybe when it comes to kind of lunchtime you pop a new one on um and that might help with the with the um with what you're feeling with feeling you know the cold the wet days um feeling harder to breathe so consider that i think consider changing your hme a bit more regularly to start with and see how you get on with that yeah perfect thank you jess um so 
a question I think that we've kind of we've very briefly covered in the, in the presentation as well. Um, I get quite dry skin in the winter and I like to use creams to moisturize and just keep my skin nice and comfortable. Can I still use creams when I wear base plates? So I think we, we yeah, you're right. We touched on this earlier, didn't we? Um, and, and the skin will get drier when it's exposed to cold air um, and creaming it, moisturizing it, absolutely the right thing to do. However, the base plates will only adhere to sort of clean, dry skin. And the only thing that should really be applied prior to base plates is a skin barrier. Um, the reason for this is that moisturizers usually have quite a high oil and water content, which will stop the base plate from sticking as well. Um, baby wipes as well, they will often interfere with the base plate sticking, so should be avoided. Um, I think cleaning the skin with a wet flannel um, or the Provox cleaning towels, they don't contain any oil based um, products in them. Um, so they're completely fine to use on the, on the skin surrounding your stoma. Um, let it dry well, apply the skin barrier as you saw during the video earlier. Um, and this will help to kind of minimize skin irritation. I would say, um, you know, let's, let's say that, that it's kind of really bad and, and, and you're really having issues and, and it's too sore and maybe it's cracking a little bit, you might want to have a chat with your clinician about maybe swapping to something different other than a base plate for the time being, um, or sometimes overnight, um, mm -hmm. just so you can let that skin heal um, before popping a base plate on again. Um, you know, skin integrity is so, so important, um, but then so is, your, so is your lung health. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a catch 22 when you're suffering that badly, um, but definitely take all the steps to, um, that we've mentioned to try and reduce skin irritation. Absolutely, and I think it's important to remember that every all of you, you're all different, and your skin, your all your skin is going to be different. So yes, we can encourage you to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Use skin barrier, use adhesive remover, but it may not all sort of work exactly the same way for all of you. So that there will be sort of, you know, things that you can do to make it better, or um, additional steps that you can take. Um, and I think Jess, you 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 pretty much answered another question um, that we had um, uh, during the winter. I tend to suffer with um, eczema near my neck, and and mm. I think the cold air tends to, you know, help. Well, not help, but sort of. Um, sort of increase that eczema and, and, and skin irritation have you got any tips but I think you sort of, sort of covered that didn't you yeah I mean I, I I'm definitely a fellow eczema sufferer so um I imagine that that with you know when your eczema flares up you, you must have some sort of cream or treatment plan for that um and you know again it's this toss-up between skin integrity is paramount we, we do not want the, the skin around your stoma to be you know split or, or cracked or bleeding at all anything like that and you know and I know that particularly with eczema and the, these kind of skin conditions um it can it can really become quite bad quite quickly so I think you know definitely prioritizing that skin integrity in this situation would be my my best top tip um and as I said discuss with discuss with your clinician um about your options there's always you know as as fabulous as the base plate are when we're, we're talking about dry and, and sore skin it, it may be worth having to switch to a tube or, or a larry button um just to allow the the skin time to heal um, and of course by by swapping to a, a tube or a button you're still able to wear a hme so it's kind of you know best of both worlds um whilst your skin is healing but um yeah i, I feel for you with eczema because that's that's close to home that one <laughs> yeah. yeah that was really well answered I definitely agree with that point um the one thing that we want to sort of encourage is, is encourage HME use and if that means that you can't wear a base plate temporarily then that's that's okay um obviously a base plate will give you a good seal but if you if, you, if you're better if you're better using a Larry tube or Larry button for this you know temporarily um allow your skin time to heal and to recover and um, then please do so um, and again talk through your options with your clinicians or with one of our customer care advisors or our nurses um yeah. yeah fab and i think have we got any more questions i think that's the majority of them isn't it is there we'll have a quick look on here yeah i think that's everything answered so we're just i think we are good to sort of come to an end and a, and a close on that if, if no one else has any more questions um 
to ask. I think um, we've covered quite a lot. I think someone has their hand up. Is that David, if you've got your hand up there, if you can pop a question um, in, in the chat or the Q&A box. Or oh, by all means, you can yeah, un or you unmute can, yourself. And yeah, unmute yourself directly. if you like. <laughs> Are you there, David? Might just be that we can't hear you. Um, yeah. Not sure. I'm not sure if you know whether if you've found the chat box or anything. Um, you could definitely try and type it there if your microphone's not working. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Up by mistake, not a problem at all. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, we hope that you found today really useful. Um, I know that that these are really common questions that I'm asked out in the field every day um, when it comes to the cold weather. So um, I really hope you found today beneficial. There has been a um, survey just popped out um, that will come up at the end of end of the um, the presentation. And if you wouldn't mind completing the survey on how you felt today was, that would be fab. Um, and if you've got any ideas about future topics you'd like us to cover, please feel free to um, to let the team know and we can we can pop something together for future. And that's that. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Take care.